What's going on, y'all? It's the Stale Ham Sandwich I Trans. You guys requested it, so we're bringing it to you live. How to build your charts from scratch. How to identify key support and resistance levels. How to get those over under so you can become a successful trader in this market. Bring it to you live. How to build a chart from iTrends. So as you can see here on my screen, we do have a chart of Apple. We did clear out all of our indicators and all of our levels just to bring you guys something blank so you guys can see fresh. Start out the jump and we're going to get right into it. So whenever charting something new, you always want to go on a larger time frame and work your way in. Here we have Apple on a weekly chart. Now something to remember and a key phrase to identify is always look left whenever you are charting because that'll help you see the bigger picture and see what historically the stock has done at current levels and you can help also project where you're going in the future so first off what we're going to do is we're going to go take a horizontal line we're going to go snap this right here at this 133 level here as you can see this is a point where this body close finished up you can also see this is where it was a old resistance level for Apple. And you can see going forward that we're going to snap that right across. Just so we have a general idea towards that downside. We're also going to mark this here on the bottom as well. Now, whenever you are starting and you're making these support and resistance levels, me personally, I like using the body closes because that's where the volume finished up. That's where the candle finished out as well. And that's where you could see a bounce come either way. So we're going to snap another line there at that 114. If we're looking for the top side, you always want to mark that high just so you have that in mind when that starts going that direction where it closed out majority. So we're not going to mark all the way at the top. We're going to go where these bodies kind of finished up before it made that extra extension. As you see right there at that 179. And we are going to take one more, one more horizontal line. We are going to snap it a little closer in just so we have a relative idea of where this bounced before it went to all-time highs and also where it could bounce going forward. So we're going to make that line snap at 163. And we're going to tighten these lines up as we go further. We're just out here on this weekly time frame. Now, something I'm going to do on this weekly time frame, as you can see, Apple is having this little extension up. I'm going to go ahead and draw a trend line starting way back from when this started, way previous. And we're going to snap this right here at the bottom of this wick, going up, making sure we tap a couple of our levels, going up towards our top of the all-time high. Just so we have a general idea and we're going to tighten that up when we get down. So we're going to switch over time frames and we're going to go to our daily chart. Now, same thing that we were looking for before. We're looking for another key sub resistance level, but something you want to also identify is whenever a stock makes a gap, as you can see, a gap in the stock usually happens when large volume comes overnight or an earnings will create a gap. But a phrase that you need to remember is gaps always fill themselves. Now, there's not a cert certain duration of time, but in general, they will always fill themselves. So we're going to draw a box. We're going to draw a little rectangle box just to mark that on our chart. And we know to identify that gap and it will fill itself eventually. As you see from our weekly time frame, we do have a level of high, but we do want to mark something closer for a projected target in the near term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that horizontal line. And whenever I do snap it, which we're going to mark this little high right here, as you can see, whenever it made this extension coming in from last week, you saw it pull up, but something I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color just because I want to differentiate between my weekly lines and my daily lines and going so forth. So we're going to snap one towards that top side. We're also going to snap one a little lower towards that bottom side where we see this volume add up. As you can see, always looking left whenever you are charting, going back to see where previous levels were. And we're going to snap one more coming a little closer. Now, something that will also help you when you are charting anything such as a tech stock or stocks in general is using other indicators. And that's what we're going to do here. So as you can see, we have our resistance set. We have our trend line coming from the back to see if that will be broken. As you can see, we have our weekly lines, which we're going to look in a general picture. And we have our daily as well. So when I said those indicators, something I like to use is the RSI just to see how overbought you can see here that we are approaching 70, which means we are overbought. So we can see that this resistance we drew on that weekly chart is holding right there at that 163 level. So this is something I like to identify and watch. Now we're also gonna go to the VI and this indicator is going to allow you to see when a potential move could 
possibly coming in the near time future. Now this purple is going to identify the positive and this orange is going to be the negative line. As you can see, whenever they do cross, it indicates a larger move on the time frame. Now when using the BI, you want to go to a weekly chart or long, larger time frames to make sure that you identify and protect yourself between whipsawing, which it does a lot on the four hour and smaller time frames, which I, I will show you that here in a minute. As you can see on this weekly chart, the VI is about to cross, indicating a larger move towards that upside. So it's gonna to wanna to position ourselves in calls, most likely some 165s. But as you see, when a VI crosses, just like it does, it indicates a larger move. As you see, VI cross here, we had a large move towards that downside. You see that the orange run, the orange negative line was front line. But as you see, we are indicating a move happening in the near time future on Apple going further that we have the positive line curling up. We have a cross on that weekly chart. This is telling me that we should have a move coming in the future. So that makes me want to believe that this trend line is going to actually hold up. Now, another thing I like to use is the EMAs and we're going to check that out. Or the VWAP. Either way, so we're going to go into that daily chart. You see that we are pulling down on these VWAP right here, but you can go into that four hour. See that we are curling up. And it's just something I use on smaller time frames just to see where the average is holding and where we can also draw a support. Now, as you see, we did drop down to that four hour time frame. So I'm going to take a horizontal line just to mark where we see these little top resistance levels on this four hour. As you can see, our weekly at that 155 was holding pretty significantly. You can see these body closes finished up here, and you can see another body is finished around as well. So I'm going to mark that on my chart just so I know the daily price action. We're going to switch up that color. You can use whatever color you want. I'm just going to switch it to red, and it's going to start our journey on to Apple. Now, something great with Weeble and with other brokers that they will save your support and resistance levels. And so that way, whenever you're going in and you start charting and start your journey, you'll have historical levels that you've marked in the past going forward that'll help you predict where the stock could be going in the future. So these are levels on Apple. As you can see, that VI is whipsawing like crazy. So you want to use that on larger time frames. So we're going to take these indicators off. And this is our chart of Apple, just if you were starting from a blank point. That's something we'll have to say is that if you are charting any stock, you always want to stay up to date. You always want to keep it relevant. And you always want to go with the trend. As we say, don't fight the trend. This has been Spencer with iTrends. If you like that video, hit that like button. If you like it just a little bit more, hit the subscribe. If you want to come check us out, come check out our Discord. The descriptions are down below. Come join the community where we do live trading and we do live charting sessions two times a week on Sunday and Wednesday. So go ahead and check that out. This has been Stale Ham Sandwich with iTrends, and thank you.